It was a week that began with the president's speech on Afghanistan, followed by a raucous rally in Phoenix that helped widen a rift between Mr. Trump and top Republicans in Congress. That's the backdrop as we turn to the regular Friday analysis of Shields and Brooks. That syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. Gentlemen, it's so good to see you both together. Welcome. So, Charlottesville, uh, it's been almost two weeks since the tragedy there. Uh, it has risen in the headlines again this week, David. The president's in Phoenix. He makes this passionate speech, unscripted, defending the way he handled Charlottesville, bringing on even more criticism. Are we any clearer now on what this president believes about racism, about white supremacy, and all of it? I think we're a little clearer on where the Republican Party is. You know, the, the Trump campaign began really seriously with the Muslim ban. It continued with a series of racial things about the wall. Uh, it continued with the Charlottesville and the reactions. And what's happened is the racial winking um, and content, white identity politics, has become a rising motif in the Trump administration, especially as everything else, including economic policy and economic populism, has fallen away. And that's meant the Republican Party, or at least some portion of it, and I don't know how big, uh, has become more of a white ethnic party, an ethnic nationalist party. And that has made uh, life impossible for a lot of people who signed up as Republicans but didn't sign up for this. And it, we've had fights within Republicans uh, on a lot of different issues, on taxes, on wars, and things like that. But this is a fight upon which parties break apart because you can't be a Republican. If the Republican Party becomes a party aligned with bigotry in some overt way, or in any way, you can't be a Republican and try to be a decent person and be part of it. And I've watched within my friends here in Washington, uh, friendships ending in a way I'd never really seen before. And friendship ending, I think, in the evangelical world, friendships are ending. And Senator Danforth had an op-ed right. today. Uh, and Gary Cohn's put in this position. And so what you're seeing is the hint of a rupture, the likes of which I really haven't seen before. And, and I was going to ask you both, and David brought it up, Mark, this, this uh, column uh, and today an interview by, this is a former Republican senator from the state of Missouri, John Danforth, mm -hmm. saying if the Republican Party doesn't disassociate itself from Donald Trump over his handling uh, most recently of Charlottesville and the race question, but he lists other issues as well. He said the party's sunk. Yeah, yeah, Jack Danforth comes with uh, credentials uh, as a senator, uh, as the Senate sponsor and personal endorser of the only African American ever nominated the Supreme Court by any Republican president, uh, Clarence Thomas, who had worked for him. Uh, so uh, he is uh, he is someone who uh, has uh, uh, has certainly cred, street cred on this uh, on this issue, um, Judy. Uh, it, it, it's quite, I think, obvious at this point that the president uh, does not understand what the job is. I mean, the job of the president of the United States is to be the voice of compassion, is to be to provide equanimity of spirit, is to provide a magnanimity of view. Uh, he, uh, in a scripted, teleprompted address, he can give a coherent speech, as he did on Afghanistan, uh, a, a, a colorless, energyless, uh, but nevertheless uh, coherent speech, as he did to the veterans. But he only thrives. Uh, he's only alive. He's only authentic uh, when he unleashes uh, his invective. Uh, when he stirs up the basest instincts of, of his supporters, um, and uh, he responds only uh, to cheers, uh, cheers and jeers of those uh, whom he opposes, whom he's still running against. Some 10 months after the election, he's still running against. Um, so it's a, it's a sad, sad time. Um, it has to be sadder for those who work in this administration uh, to learn, as the Quinnipiac University poll, a, a respected poll, showed this week that Americans, by two to one, believe that Donald Trump is dividing the country rather than uniting the country. Uh, that a solid majority, three to two, they believe the press, uh, the, the dreaded media over Donald Trump to tell the truth. Um, and uh, they believe that uh, three out of five Americans believe he is giving aid and comfort uh, to white supremacists and encouragement. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, it's a truly sad, I, don't, I, I, I can only say to Republicans, I mean, it is a time you're going to be asked about this. Now, you're going to be asked where you stood. 
uh, and what you did uh, on uh, on Donald Trump. And I thought Gary Cohen, it only took him two weeks uh, to come do it. And, this is uh, the president's economic uh, Yes, and, and then he yeah. came to the, uh, the decision of conscience uh, that Janet Yellen made a very uh, candid statement today, a, a resignation statement might someone say, at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, where she, uh, she announced that she, in fact, uh, that the regulations imposed on the big banks after the collapse of 2008, uh, the, the financial crisis, were necessary, were wise, uh, and should not be repealed. So Gary Cohn, holding on slimly, perhaps to the hope of becoming chair of the Federal Reserve, swallowed uh, his misgivings and the odor of anti-Semitism that smacked Donald Trump's remarks and agreed to continue as a patriotic man uh, to, uh, to serve. And I guess we can only salute him. But it's a zigzag course, David. I mean, as both of you have said, when, he, when the president's reading from a teleprompter, the message is uh, that, that we reject racism, we re reject white supremacy, neo-Nazis. But it's in these speeches where the, the, there's, another, there's another message that seems to come out. I was just reading the radio address that the White House is going to put out right. tomorrow from the president. He's back to the scripted uh, lines, uh, rejecting everything that smacks of... Of, uh, to his racism. credit, he's incapable of insincerity and hypocrisy. <laughs> he can he can keep up for for an hour, for a day, for 24 hours. Is the he'll say what they tell him to say. But he and then within 24 hours, he's got to come back to be himself, and he's got to explode beyond those barriers. And we've seen that again and again and again. And I just think the Trump administration is going to wander into these fields more and more in the months and years ahead. Mm -hmm simply because they don't have an economic agenda. I put very small chance of tax reform. They don't have a populist things they can bring to people. And so what they have is this, this ethnic nationalism. And they're frankly going to be helped sometimes by Democrats or by radicals on the left who are going to deface a Thomas Jefferson statue mm -hmm. or do something like that. And then that's, a, that's catnip for Donald Trump. He can say they're defacing Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And so then the uh, identity politics of the left and the identity politics play off each other. And you get this uh, war of, of people who think that white and black are the only two categories in life and that we should have some sort of political war over this. And it begins to look like the Sunnis and the Shiites. And as I say, that's a Republican Party that uh, decent people don't want to be a part of, frankly. And, and Mark, the president, meantime, is uh, firing off tweets against fellow Republicans. I mean, today or it was Senator Bob Corker. Uh, it's been the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Speaker Paul Ryan. You go down the list, five or six or seven different Republicans he's going after. What's the, the strategy, the rationale? I'm yeah. glad to be able to explain it. <laughs> it, it. It was deemed, prior to this week, it was deemed impossible to make Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell into a sympathetic public figure. And uh, Donald Trump has achieved that. Um, he, it, it, it makes no sense. Politics is a matter of addition, not subtraction. Um, and it, I'm sorry, Mr. President, you cannot distance yourself from your own administration. I mean, they're saying, oh, he's going to blame the Republican Congress for the stall programs, the non-programs, as David's pointed out, uh, and the, the, the non-achievements the non is their fault. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it just won't wash. I mean, no, no president uh, has ever attempted to do that before, uh, to say, I, I, I wasn't involved in my own administration. It, it's these guys in my own party up on the Hill have done it to me. Okay. Uh, so you know, it, makes, it makes absolutely no sense politically. There was one explanation offered by some people in the White House and the Washington Post today that uh, he sees a, a looming disaster, and so he's going to distance himself. You cannot distance yourself as a president from your own administration. Well, but, it, but it, again, I'm referring to this Washington Post story, David. The, the theory is that the president's going to be able to point the finger at those Republicans who messed this up, didn't get the job done. Yeah, I don't think theory or strategy would be the words. <laughs> I think it makes him feel good uh, to get in a shouting match with Mitch McConnell over the investigation of Russia. There's no strategy here. The, the, the biggest, aside from the legislative agenda, the biggest event looming in Washington these exactly. days is the Mueller investigation. And if there's some sort of bringing of impeachment, well, the U.S. Senate, who he is working really hard to offend, they're the jury at the end of the day. And so it's just craziness to offend uh, those people. Uh, and But yet he's doing it, I think, out of short-term, it's a matter of not strategy, but psychology. In the meantime, his administration is 
is moving in a conservative direction. Lisa Desjardins had a report marked this week on the many steps that uh, Jeff Sessions is taking at right. the Justice Department to roll back uh, what we saw during the Obama administration. Uh, just tonight, the president has now finally signed an order telling the Pentagon uh, not to uh, admit uh, anyone, any tra any individuals who are transgender, not to pay for uh, this uh, the surgery that some of them choose to have. Um, so so there are steps being taken to carry out the conservative agenda. Conservative agenda, Judy, I, I don't, I, you know, I, among issues I haven't heard pollsters report were volunteered by those interviewed were statues being removed, uh, which the president adroitly moved after, or transgender uh, <laughs> service members. I mean, uh, the, the, the Navy SEAL who served 20 years did 13 overseas deployments, seven combat deployments, um, and uh, is, is, earned one bronze star and one purple heart, uh, and is and transgender, is now a woman, um, had more deployments uh, and more days in uniform uh, than Donald Trump or Mike Pence uh, or S Secretary Huddleston uh, or Secretary Mnuchin or Secretary Price or Secretary Carson. Go right through it. Uh, I mean, he's, he proved his patriotism. She proved her patriotism, that they're 100 percent American. I, 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 don't, I don't understand this. Uh, I, I commend uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Joe Dunford, for as soon as it came out, saying uh, that uh, when, when it came out originally has been flirted with it in his tweet, uh, that the, those who serve honorably in this uh, service will be, will be respected and continue to be so. Mr. Yeah. 20 seconds. As I understand that, the important thing here was when he made the order, the generals decided that's just Trump being Trump, let's just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And so that was the right thing to do. What's disturbing here is he actually followed through on yeah. his own statement. And so it, a lot of people in the administration are just saying, let's just let it pass, let it pass, let it pass mm -hmm. on a lot of ranges. If he's going to now start following through and actually behaving, that puts them all in a much tougher position. And this is after saying in the campaign he was going to be supportive of those who are LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. David, Mark, we thank you both. Thank you.